All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be making mosquito netting using a sewing machine. And we, we make this, this material out of single-use plastic bags. We turn that into a base material. It's a very strong material. In fact, you can make bags out of this. You can actually see these different videos around the web. We have some of our own. The base material is pretty, pretty uh, basic, easy to make. What we're doing different this time is actually using a sewing machine. I just got back from Africa and we did this with a treadle sewing machine and it worked great. Electric sewing machine works fine also. The four items you're going to need in order to complete this and make a, a mosquito netting is your just base plastic and you can collect this from anywhere. Um, you'll need nails. The nails will need to be two millimeters or less. The shank size, two millimeters or less. You'll need a triangle file and these come in a whole lot of different sizes and the nice thing about the triangle file, no matter how big it is, the angle is still the same. The drawback is the larger these are, the wider that actual corner is. If you get the super small files, they work best. I'm sure you can get some jeweler files that are smaller than this. And then you're going to need a sewing machine. And even if you don't have a sewing machine, you can actually put the tip. We're going to, I'll show you how to make a modified tip. You can actually put the tip right on the, the end of this and use that for your finger and punch these, the, the plastic yourself with your hand. So you don't actually even need a sewing machine. But in order to make one um, of this size with this many holes, the sewing machine obviously is, is going to help. This is uh, just a, a normal little nail. It's two millimeters in diameter. We cut off the base, we cut off the top, and then you end up with this blank. And here's that, that tip, and I, we just took a triangle file, and you cut across it one way, and then make a perpendicular cut in the other direction. And you might find it's, it's beneficial to use uh, a vise to hold this, or have a friend pinch it down against something hard, like pinching it down against the tabletop. The details on this and uh, some better photos than probably what you've just seen here are on the web. You can just hop on to uh, Dome Mosquito Netting and uh, get actual instructions on how to make these needles. They're very simple to make. The first thing you're going to need to do to the sewing machine, however, is re remove the bobbin assembly. All right, putting your uh, needle into place. The first thing you're, wanna gonna, you're gonna wanna do is make sure your needle is gonna pass through uh, the deck and any mechanics that are in the way. So just rotate it and let it slide through a couple of times. And then if you're sure you're not getting any hits, you can go ahead and run the, the electricity. And once you have all that in place, all you need to do is start sewing. All right, so now we have a, a good piece of net. Um, we have some holes in here. I'm gonna show you how to patch these holes. If you get too close to a, uh, an existing hole, it'll punch out a larger one. When you're done, you'll often have um, unpunched plastic on each edge. This is actually convenient because you can overlap these two edges and iron this together and it makes a much tighter seam. If you don't have that, and sometimes when you're cutting and, and piecing different pieces together, you won't, and you can go ahead and overlap this region here and iron this together here. It's just a, a stronger seam if you iron that way. You can see our holes a little bit more clearly here. Here I stitched uh, one set too close and I ended up ripping up right through here and literally cutting through this. I'll show you how to make patches for that. This is a very simple uh, process to go through and patch uh, as you get better with it. So this is my first one today. I got too close several times. This is my uh, patch, uh, the second patch I did and I only have a couple over here. So once you get used to it, get in the groove, you really clean this up and it goes fairly quickly. I'm going to show you how to, to seal these two pieces together. One thing you're going to need is a ridge to seal these on and I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to set this up like that. So our iron, our heat is only distributed right where we want it. If we don't do that, you'll end up with something like this. If you iron straight across this, you'll end up with, in this case, the iron went across this side over here and you can see the holes I don't know how well it shows up on the video, but these holes have stretched out a lot because of the heat, whereas these over here have stayed the size that we want them. So when we apply the heat, we really want to apply it just along this region and not spread it out. So you'll need some ridge. In this case, we're just using a yardstick to do this. All right, so we have our two pieces. We're on top of our yardstick. We have wax paper underneath. Um, again, you can use newspaper, magazines, anything will work. Wax paper just is kind of convenient. Um, when we were in Africa, we were using a, a type of tracing paper that was sort of a heavyweight plastic that did great. Um, it wouldn't rip um, like the wax paper does. 
and uh, didn't melt in the high heat, so it was, it was a really good deal. Haven't found that here yet. So once you have your ridge lined up, you can go right down the center of this piece you, you're trying to make. All right, now remember, you're going through 16 ply now, so we're gonna wanna flip this over and iron again. This went really fast uh, and, and much easier. So when we're done, we peel off our piece and take a look at it and see what we have. And we have a, a really good seal. That's actually worked really well. And so if you look, um, the holes on both sides, I don't know if you can see it over there, but the holes on both sides have stayed basically the same. Here's a tear that we have, and I'll show you how to patch that and um, a couple other patches over here. Okay, so we're gonna patch this um, hole right here. And I just have, this is single ply. This is just a, a scrap of, of plastic paper. Now, if I use something that big, I'm gonna end up blocking out a whole bunch of holes. So I really wanna shrink this down, but I don't wanna go so small that it's not functional. So we will trim that up a little bit. Put that in place, put our wax paper over it. And then because we're only going through one ply, we actually don't need a lot of heat. So you can just use the tip of your iron, work that into place. And there we have it. So now we have a patch in place. But the nice thing about these nets is if you tear them anywhere, you can patch them. So you know if you really are sitting in your house and you roll over and accidentally catch the net and rip it, to patch this is super easy. You just lay another piece right over the top of this, iron that back together, and you've patched your net. So here's that piece. We've uh, put the patch in where I put the big tear, so our patch is, is holding. Um, the nice thing is not only is this easy to patch and easily repairable, you can use this technology to patch existing nets. So all you have to do is take an existing net, put a piece on both sides, melt them together, and quickly patch that existing net. All right, so one of the goals of this project is to break the cycle of dependence. By educating people and showing them how to make their own nets, they're no longer dependent on donors for those nets. And if you think about the nets that are being given, they have a life expectancy of, on, on the manufacturer, say two to five years, even if it's out to 10 years. It means in 10 years time, someone else is gonna have to come back to that village and donate once again, that those people are still dependent on those nets. If you hand out, say, three million nets, that sounds like a lot of nets. That's enough nets for everyone in the city of Nairobi. That's it, for the entire planet, we've handed out enough nets for, for one city. If you wanna to go to the country of Kenya, then you're gonna need about 30 million nets. And at $10 a piece, that's $300 million you're gonna to need to give away. Just like the existing plastic nets that we're handing out for $10 a piece, these nets can be sprayed with insecticide to improve their effectiveness. One of the other benefits that we get from this is that families can actually make money for themselves. They're selling the extra nets and going around and, and, and making that money. Um, the technology can make bags and turn around and, and sell those bags and make money for your family. And another real benefit is you're cleaning up the environment as you do it. So you're actually saving your own environment. If you're an environment that's really relying on tourism, like much of Africa, then you're helping clean up that environment and actually stimulating the economy of your own country. So there's a lot of benefits to, to using these nets. And the only thing that needs to take place is education. All we need to do is go out and show people how to do this on the ground. There's nothing technical about this, nothing hard about this. People can do for themselves if someone can show them how to do it. So go out and spread the word. If you aren't going to Africa, if you aren't going to South America, you can tell someone who is. You can e email people on the ground, show them this video. And uh, if you do it, send me pictures. Let me see what you're doing. I'm Brad Elder at Doan College, and that's making mosquito nets.